What's up guys, this is Christopher Carrington with gmustudent.com and today we're going to continue rolling through on how to make a JavaScript form validation um, program. So basically in the previous tutorial what we figured out was how to if the user um, is typing in information here and then all of a sudden they don't have any information it will say name is required in red. But what happens if the user starts typing in information after that? Well, then we should be able to tell the user, okay, the name is valid now. Even though later on we will figure out a way how to make sure it's a first and last name. But as you can see, after it says name is required, it kind of just stays there. Name is required doesn't go anywhere. So somehow we have to figure out how to overwrite that name is required. And if it's good, then to say valid, the, the name is good. And we can say welcome and whatever their name is. So we'll say welcome and whatever the name is in here. So, in order to do that, we have our program that checks if the name is zero, and if it is zero, then it will return false, and it will say, this is bad, and it will show this. But, what if we say under this, we produce a prompt that says hello, and that it's actually good, and then we, um, and then we return true. So what if we said something like this, produce prompt, and then in here we said name is valid and then we did it in the same prompt location so I can just highlight this paste that in there and then we said green because now we want to say name is valid in green and then under that we return true so now let's see what happens in our um, in here if we type in it will say name is valid and if we take it out it will say name is required type a letter name is valid take it out name is required boom 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 pretty sweet but um i think it would be even cooler if we could actually put in the user's name while they were typing kind of like how you saw on mine so in order to do that we would want our message to be welcome and the user's name so what's actually in this element id so in order to do that all you would say is welcome, you would put a little space, and then you would say plus, and the name. So now this whole message that will be sent to produce prompt would be welcome and whatever their name is so far. This is the whole reason why we wrote that function produce prompt, so that we don't have to write that document.elementById every single time. So let's see if it worked. So if I use this form and I say Chris Carrington, you'll see while I type, it starts populating my name over here. You know that's cool, trust me. It, it's pretty cool, I think it's cool anyway. So, now what we wanna do is we don't wanna just validate if there's a name in here because what if the person types in 84528, what if they just type in jibble jabble? We don't want it to say that the name is um, valid and say welcome. Instead, we wanna say that is an invalid name. So in order to do that, we need to utilize something called rejects and I would um, advise all of you to go to maybe see a couple tutorials on rejects I'm going to give you kind of a crash course in it right now and I hope to clear up a lot of things but I know there are some tutorials out there this is called regular expressions and I know they might be able to say a little bit more than I do but um, I'm just gonna give you guys a crash course in this thing so just follow along and I won't leave you guys behind so a good way to learn rejects is to go to this website so open up a new tab and let's say rejectspal.com. I love this website and I'm here all the time. Oh man, hold on a second. They logged me out. Do do do. Sorry about that, guys. This is what happens when you go to college. They log you out of things all the time. Well, let me log in over here. Well, this will be interesting for the tutorial. Okay. Now, if I close out of this and I try again, rejectspal.com. Okay, now I am in, uh, sorry about that, two second little uh, detour. So, what I want to do is in rejectspal.com, how it works is you write the phrase or the string of what you are trying to match, and then in here, you write the regular expression for it. So down here, what we are trying to match for is some kind of person's first and last name. So let's say Chris Carrington. And the way rejects works is it's a set of characters and all these weird things that will be able to match Chris Carrington or any first and last name that we ever get. So it's just these weird characters that will be able to match what we are looking for. So what we are looking for exactly 
is a set of characters right here. Then we are looking for a space. And then we are looking for another set of characters. So we aren't looking for numbers. We aren't looking for asterisks. All we are looking for is a set of characters, a space, and another set of characters. So in order to say that in rejects, you want to start with a caret. That will say we want to start at the first character. Okay? And then you want to do what is, what is called a set in rejects. And this will say we are looking for whatever is in this set. So you want to say that we are looking for capital letters and we are looking for lowercase letters. And that's it. So the user's first name can only contain capital letters and lowercase letters. If it contains anything else, it won't match. Okay? So in order to say that we are looking for capital letters and lowercase letters, do A to Z, which will be all the capital letters, and then do A to Z, which will be all the lowercase letters. But as you can see, this set that we made is only matching the very first the very first letter. And the reason it's doing that is because this set is only applied to each letter. But instead of having to write this set for every single letter that we are expecting, just do an asterisk at the end. And then it will match all of the letters that you have in the um in the document. So so in that input cell, it would match Chris. But as you can see, it does not match this because that's white space. So rejects is saying, okay, I matched all the capital letters from the beginning of the string, and I matched all the lowercase letters, but then you showed me white space, and I don't know what the hell that is, so I'm not going to match it. So since we want to match white space, we have to do a backslash S, and then give me curly braces and say one. So what this is saying is we want to look for any capital letters and lowercase letters, and then we are looking for white space that is one, um, one uh, slot of white space. So the asterisk means that you're looking for an unlimited amount, and then this um, set thing means that you are looking for only one. So let's say if we typed in 9 in here, as you can see, it does not work anymore because we are only looking for capital and lowercase letters. So we take out 9 and we type in a pound sign. It does not work. All right. So now we can see that what we are doing is actually working. We only want to start at the beginning and we're only looking for capital letters and lowercase letters. We're looking for an unlimited amount and then we're looking for white space, which is one slot. So if we Ted said two slots of white space, then we would be looking for two slots of white space, but we are only looking for one slot. Okay, I hope this is kind of making sense to you. I know this is kind of a crash course, but if you follow along, we're actually going to do rejects for every single one of these. We're going to do rejects for name, phone number, email, and comment. So by the end, you are going to get some kind of familiarity with rejects. So now that we are looking for that one cell of white space, now we are looking for the last name, which is capital letters and it's lowercase letters. It's the exact same thing. So we could actually copy this and we could say we're looking for another set which is capital letters to lowercase letters and uh, and it's an unlimited amount and if we do a dollar sign at the end it will say that it wanted to go all the way to the end so if the user typed in stuff after this it would not work but if they only typed in Chris Carrington so even if they put a space after it this rejects expression up here will not work because the dollar sign says after you get to the last character if you see anything else then this shouldn't work. So this is seeing white space at the end, so it doesn't match. So first, we looked for from the very beginning of the string. So these are the two um, things that kind of encapsulate our rejects. So in the beginning of the string to the end of the string, we looked for a set of characters. Then we looked for one cell of white space. Then we looked for a set of characters. And then we said that it has to end after that. So if you put a 9 at the end, it will not work. But if that's all you put in, it works. That's how rejects works. So now we have to figure out how to take this regular expression that we just wrote and convert it into JavaScript. So the way that we do that is under this name, now we have validated if the name length is 0. So the next thing we want to validate is if the name uh, does not match that regular expression. So the way we can do that is say if the name does not match so this is if the name 
does not match whatever is in here. Then, do this. Oh, I hate when my curly braces are messed up. If the name does not match whatever the regular expression is, so we're going to put the regular expression in there, then do whatever is in here. So we want to produce a prompt that will say, uh, let's say first and last name, please. Okay, so now we are telling the user exactly what we want. We want it to be in the comment name prompt, and we want it to be red, semicolon. And then we just say return false. Okay, so now we need to put the regular expression in this match because we're saying if name.match doesn't equal what? What doesn't it match? So the way you do that is you come to your rejects pal and you copy everything in here. And then let's go back to Eclipse. And in here, you want to do two forward slashes. And then in the middle of the forward slash, paste in your regular expression. Boom. So this is saying, if the name does not match exactly what this weird-ass hieroglyphic-looking thing says, then you need to produce a prompt that says, hey, give me your first and last name, dude. I, I, I don't want anything else. So, And then if this condition is false and this condition is false, meaning that the name is valid, then we will show welcome. All right? So if the name is not zero and the name does match this, then we will say welcome. So let's save this and let's see if it works. So if we come back in here and let's refresh the page. So now we are going to type in Chris and he will say first and last name, please. We do a space and then we say Carrington. And now it works. But if we put in a zero here, it won't work. Or if we put in an eight here, it won't work. So you might want to, you, maybe you can do another regular expression that could check if there are any numbers, then you say don't put any numbers. But the user can, should kind of get the gist from here that they have to put in a valid user uh, first name and last name. So this was a kind of like a crash course of rejects where you're going to have a whole new set of rejects for the phone number because that's going to validate if it's numbers and things like that. So if you guys are enjoying this tutorial, keep coming back and keep coming back for more and comment below and let me know if you have any problems, but I hope this all makes sense to you and thank you all for staying tuned and watching these tutorials and I will see you all in the next one.